heard the theme of this youth convention, young people breaking cycles. It was something very personal to me. So I say to President Humphreys, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share my testimony. This past May, I graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in psychology. Although obtaining a college degree is a great achievement, the journey to the finish line was not an easy one. Throughout my education experience, there was always a hurdle or obstacle I had to face. I can recall while in elementary school, my godmother, Kim, attended my parent-teacher's conference. My, my teacher, Ms. Alexander, apologized to my godmother for not having a folder with any work, with any of my work to show. She said, I didn't think anyone was coming for Tashe because no one ever comes. Ms. Alexander then expressed to my godmother that she was not sure if I would graduate. She then challenged me to solve a problem and to her amazement, I was able to do so. See, to Ms. Alexander, she thought, no one cares about Tashe's education, so why should I? Her perception of doubt, negativity, and hopelessness was all she anticipated from me. However, God said, not so. Yeah. For I am not who others say I am, but I am who God says I am. Not only did I graduate, I scored one of the highest scores on the state exam. <laughs> While in high school, I was placed in honor classes. However, science was far from my favorite subject. But thankfully, God blessed me with the science whiz as a pastor. <laughs> Bishop Bell not only prayed for me, but he tutored me in chemistry and even pinched me a few times. <laughs> Once I graduated high school, I had doubts about pursuing a college education. See, I was the first to graduate high, high school in my immediate family. Growing up, college was not something that was discussed in my household. I thought, God, I would be the first to attend college. How would I pay for this? Lord, is this even possible? Then I heard God say, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. With the help of my godmothers, Kim and Katrina Green, and my godfather, Joseph Bell Jr., in the prayers of my bishop and church family, I got accepted to several colleges. I received the grant that covered my full college expense during my first year of school. I later left my first college to be closer to home. However, that decision had its consequences. It seemed like whatever the devil could throw my way, he did. I can remember thinking, why is the devil trying to prevent me from graduating? Is it because I would be a millionaire after this? I later realized getting my college de degree was bigger than receiving a million dollars. It would cause a cycle to be broken. <laughs> receiving my college degree not only affected my life, but it affected the lives of others. You may ask how so. Well, my grandparents never attended college, nor did my parents. I was the first among my siblings and cousins to attend college and graduate. As I already mentioned, to get to the finish line was not easy. It seemed like every time I was close to graduating, there was another requirement I had to fill. I was told I needed to declare a major and a minor. Once I began to take classes to do so, it was no longer a requirement from the school. There was a mandatory test in place that all students needed to take in order to graduate. Then later, that requirement was dismissed. I was the type of student who had to study twice as hard as the next person in class just to get an A. Working full time, doing 12 hour shifts, and going to school full time, taking classes during the fall, spring, summer, was a challenging task. I can remember thinking at times, I feel like I'm on a treadmill. I'm running, but I'm not going anywhere. But God would say, be not weary and well doing. We shall reap the harvest if we faint not. But what made me stick out from the rest was my endurance and determination to make it to the finish line. There were so many times I wanted to quit. But the Bible tells us to rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance. 
Ephesians 4 and 31 tells us, the race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. None of, none of this would have been possible without the Lord on my side. I remember giving God an ultimatum at the age of 11. Yeah, I know you're thinking, how did she give God an ultimatum? But see, I was in desperate need of help. I told God I would try this church thing for three months, and if nothing happens, I'm out of here. Well, those three months has now been over 13 years. Thank God. I'm the only one in my family that is saved. They couldn't understand at the age of 11, 12, 13, why my walk became different, why my talk became different. The way I act, act was no longer the same. The way I dressed became different. They would say, are you a part of a cult or something? I think you're being brainwashed. They couldn't understand the change in me. But how many people know when you give your life to Christ, you are a new creature? Yes. Young people, when you take a stand for holiness, you don't have to separate yourself from some. They will start to separate from you. My family and friends didn't understand why I wanted to stop going to parties but desired to be at church. Some said because your parents didn't graduate, you wouldn't either. Because my family had a history of alcoholics, I was bound to be one. But I can testify, I never had a drink in my life. We're talking about breaking cycles. Because my father was a gangbanger, I was supposed to be one. But I'm so glad I'm a fighter for Jesus. Most women in my family had babies at a young age, but with the help of the Lord, I believe first would come love, then would come marriage, then Tasha may come with a baby father to raise me. I couldn't understand why some said I would be nothing and I, would amount to any, I wouldn't amount to anything. But I've come to realize all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. God blessed me with my godmother Kim and my mommy Katrina who adopted me as her daughter. Thank you both for always being there for me and for loving me and believing in me when I didn't even believe in myself. God also blessed me with father figures and my pastor, Bishop Joseph Bell Sr. and my godfather, Joseph Bell Jr. I thank you all for your prayers and your encouragement, your tough love and life examples of holiness. Parents, pastors, youth leaders, mentors, it is so important that we encourage our young people and train them up in the way they should go. There may be some young people here who live in an unsafe household. You may have come to the convention with your grandparents, your aunt, your uncle, godparents, but I'm here to tell you God can supply every one of your needs. Growing up, I looked forward to coming to conventions, going to church, and having fellowship with the saints because I knew once I got home, there was warfare that was gonna take place. But God is so good. My, God, my grandmother now attends church every Sunday and she put the bottle down and picked up the Bible. I thank God for breaking cycles. The same family members that mocked me are the same ones that called me for prayer whenever they're in need. They inquire about how to seek God and to serve him. I say to God be the glory. Just last year, over a dozen of my family members came to Bethel. Again, I'm talking about breaking cycles. I say to the graduates, the only way to truly be, su to be successful is to know Jesus as your personal savior. Just last week, I attended a funeral for a young man in my um, apartment complex who just graduated college with a bachelor's degree. He was shot and killed. He was supposed to attend a master's, a master's program in um, September. And unfortunately, his life was cut short. So it's, it's good that we're here to celebrate Education Day and to acknowledge graduates. But there's something more that we all need. We need Jesus on our side. We need to accept him as our personal savior. God is soon to come, young people. And I just want you to know that he is real. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't have a mother, a father that prayed for me. 
that brought me to Sunday school. And I longed for that change. And when I found Jesus for myself, I didn't want anybody else. Death has no age.